Welcome to the Drum Lounge Podcast. What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Drum Lounge Podcast. I am your rat tat tat this host, your book report finessing, your drum roll playing host, <laughs> Jeremy Foster. Um, and welcome to the show, man. Uh, so I got a I got a guest here, but this is not just a guest. Like this is somebody that's actually about to be an additional voice on on our podcast. So this is a big announcement here. Now we got an additional guest, uh, yeah. an additional voice on this show, a co-host yeah. by the name of Dasmin Grisby. Man, yeah. what's up, man? What's, what's up, to the man? show? Thank you. I'm glad to be a part, man. I've been listening to the podcast ever since you started. So Appreciate it, man. I'm a fan first. Um, when I have time, I definitely turn it on and listen to yeah, you. So yeah. I'm just glad that you know Exclusive Percussion can partner with you oh, man, yeah, and do sure. something super dope. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's crazy, man. Uh, just to give a little a brief story on how this how this happened and how we got here. Um, as, as y'all know, I've had the podcast for a minute, um, and um, I kind of was just going the audio only route. Um, but I did have visions of in, implementing a video. A portion and just having like this this basic studio where I could record uh, my podcast but I didn't know when or how I could make that happen and so um, just out the blue I got a text <laughs> from Daz man and he was like hey uh, I got an idea of us collaborating uh, you collaborating with uh, exclusive percussion and uh, he was like, "Hey, I can provide these resources. I got, I got, I got a guy with a studio. Shout out to RDK Studios. Shout out. <laughs> and oh, um, yeah. and uh, we can really make this thing pop, man. And when it, when he said that, I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm down, man. I'm down. And um, um, just having him on the podcast as an additional voice as well was also something that I really wanted. And so um, this man has knowledge of percussion as much as I do. I mean, he may even have more in terms of the just gigging portion. Bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> So uh, so yeah, man. This is this is gonna be a good venture, man. Um, we we see we got a studio now. We got the video portion. So you you're looking at this podcast. You're actually looking at the podcast now. Right. Um, but you can still look at look at uh, listen to the audio version as well. And so, man, I just appreciate it, oh, man. man. Thank you for having appreciate me. Appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some awesome episodes, yeah. man. We have a lot of stuff planned for you guys. Um, not as only as just drummers, but as just entrepreneurs, yeah. as black yeah. people, um, as just if, if you're just a fan of podcasting, yeah. you're definitely going to enjoy this show. So definitely subscribe, like, and share uh, this information. For sure. For sure. Uh, Give us a little information about you. Like, what's all right, well, I know you uh, went to a very, very prestige uh, college. I did, what school man. Is that? It's a you know a small school down in Daytona Beach, yeah, Florida, yeah. man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I graduated from Bethune Cookman University. Uh, graduated in 2011 with my um, with my uh, BS degree in, in business administration. Um, but I'm, I started playing drums when I was uh, here in, in Atlanta, Decatur, uh, mm -hmm. more specifically at Southwest DeKalb High School, yeah. where uh, that's where my first start was. Yeah. Um, and I was only there for one year. I, I played in the marching band for one year. That second year, I got uh, promoted to drum major. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then my senior year, I was head drum major and went to the Rose Bowl Parade up in Pasadena, California. Ooh, yeah. Did a lot of good stuff uh, at Southwest, played with uh, Missy Elliott when we did the uh, her 2006 album of Bad. No, I'm sorry, Cookbook. Yeah, the song yeah. was Bad Man. So if, wow. uh, if you want to listen to an old school South the Cab section, pull up Bad Man. And um, wow. we actually was uh, that was a nominated a Grammy nominated album oh, for really? best rap album. Wow. Uh, so we didn't. didn't I, know I, honestly, I didn't know that until like couple of years ago yeah so, wow, wow. um so we did a lot of stuff at southwest the cab man yeah. and i was burnt out of band yeah yeah we did falcons game we did all the craziness so going to college i was like i just want to study i'm yeah, a regular yeah. student <laughs> and that didn't happen because i needed to yeah need money for, but. right i need to pay for school my first choice was morehouse second choice was like georgia state okay. or something or Al albany state mm -hmm. and my third choice was actually but known cook man okay mom was like hey check out this band yeah pretty dope I was like, all right, cool. So my senior year, spring break, went down to Daytona, actually did an audition in front of Wells, and wow. um, got the last percussion scholarship. Ooh, in the nick of time. In the nick of time, it was like $9,000. Okay. And he was like, man, I wish I can give you more, but yeah, I'm yeah. really out of the budget. I said, I'll take whatever you got. Mm -hmm. And that started my career at Bethune Cookman, and from there, uh, section leader for three and a half years, uh, show planning committee leader yeah, uh, yeah. for three years. 
uh, where we did the Super Bowl um, pregame show, Pro Bowl halftime yeah, show, yeah. a list of other things. Yeah. Came back home after I graduated, got my master's, um, and started working professionally in the corporate arena. Mm -hmm. Then started doing some things with uh, the Atlanta Hawks drum line. Yeah, yeah. Then started doing stuff for the Atlanta Braves drum line. Then that's when we did stuff for Drumline Live. Yeah, and you know, yeah, it's kind of kept the thing yeah. going, but I was still corporate. Right, right. And uh, one day I was like really tired of the corporate living. Yeah, yeah. I was, I loved music. I wanted to completely do it full time, but I just didn't have the courage to do it. Yeah. February 2nd, 2018, I said, man, forget it. I'm about to quit, go full fledged musician, <laughs> yeah. percussion, drummer. And uh, literally a month later, that's when uh, I got a call from Don Roberts for Drumline Live, yeah. where we did the 2018 Coachella performance. And then ever since then, man, God has been blessing me with uh, awesome opportunities, playing with Sierra, yeah. playing yeah. with Dougie Fresh, playing with uh, just a list of other uh, people, and yeah. playing for companies such as Amazon, Walmart, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. the list goes on. So that's my little little blur yeah, of yeah. What, I, who, who, what I do, how I became you know, yeah. where I am today. Yeah, no, nah, that's amazing, man. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, I know you mentioned the Beyonce thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I I think about that that event a lot, man. Yeah. Because uh, a Cause lot of us a lot of us got the call right. to uh, to do the performance. Right. But uh, I I had a special case, so I had an internship at the time. I was uh I was uh, working at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta as okay. uh, in their IT department, and um, I got a call from Don P. <laughs> he was like, "Yo, I got this gig, bro. All right. It's for a very big artist." Right. And we're going to have to uh, fly you out to Cali tonight. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I think it was like tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. It was real quick. Yeah, it was like we're going to have to fly you out to Cali tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, will you take this? <laughs> Literally, when I tell you, my whole life flashed before my yeah. eyes because I had to think about yeah. everything before I could just say yes or no. To. Uh, but man, I couldn't. I couldn't do it, bro. Cause yeah. my uh, my fiance, uh, she had she had her graduation in May, yeah. and um, she really really fought through college. Right. Like really, I'm talking about every course she had. Really had to really. Yeah, so it was a definite celebration. Nails. It was yes. a celebration, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a big celebration. Yeah. So I had to I had to go there and support her. But yeah. um, that was a. Uh, I, yeah. yeah. No, but on the, I, I feel you because if it wasn't for me literally jump, jumping out in faith and like yeah. still working for it, uh, I was working for a cosmetic, sur uh, cosmetic surgery clinic yeah, at the time. Yeah. So I was making pretty decent money, mm -hmm. but the, the, the schedule was crazy. Yeah, so yeah. honestly, if I was still working for them, I probably would be like, nah, I can't yeah, do it. Yeah. So I totally understand. It was a really a last minute decision. Yeah. Man. You had to think on your feet. Exactly, man. Uh, but yeah, most definitely. <laughs> I was definitely living through y'all, man. Through y'all stories, y'all oh, yeah, IG man. stories and it IG was, posts. Oh yeah, and the crazy part is the NDAs was crazy. We still can't Ooh. talk about certain things wow. that happened. But um, when we got there, it was really for the culture because yeah, they were looking yeah, at us sure, like, sure. oh man, y'all from Atlanta, y'all drum? Yeah. Oh, okay. And they looking at us like we some superstars yeah, yeah. and we're looking at dancers who've literally danced for major people yeah, all around yeah, the world. Exactly. Michael, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Jenna Jackson, yeah. the, 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 the best of the best. And right, they looking yeah. at us like, oh, what y'all, oh, y'all don't. Right. <laughs> so we had to, fall, you know, we had to do our thing yeah. and it was, it was really for the culture. Yeah. Like, yeah. and that's what we pride ourselves on doing it. Now, I definitely think uh, that Coachella performance just put band just on the forefront in the black culture for, for real. Sure. I mean, sure. you know, we, the, the band culture in the black community is pretty prominent, but man, when Beyonce did her thing and having literally a whole band on yeah, stage with her, never happened before. I think, yeah, I think that uh, our community was just like, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I like band. Right, <laughs> like, but you know, there's something about it is now nah, I really, yeah, really like yeah, it. Yeah. And it's, it, it has really taken over. And I, even with, when I came back, back mm -hmm. to Atlanta, I was playing with the Braves drum line. Yeah. I was, you know, still doing stuff in the community. I was like, look, once this really release, yeah, yeah, and really understand what just happened once the CD come out. Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't, we didn't even know it was gonna be a live CD. We didn't know oh, it was wow, gonna wow. be a live album. We didn't know it was gonna be a Netflix documentary. Wow, yeah. We found out just like how y'all found out. Oh, wow! And so we wake up the next day and we, like we got <laughs> the album on yeah, your iTunes. Yeah, yeah. You got the documentary on Netflix, that is and dope. we're looking like whoa. That is and dope. I said, look. It's gonna shoot. Yeah, yeah. Like even with my my uh, with exclusive percussion, I was like, there's gonna be a lot of gigs going yeah, on just yeah. because from what Beyonce just really put out. Yeah. And now you literally to this day you see the impact mm -hmm. from Coachella, how yeah. it has com it has affected literally. the community, yeah, yeah, the drum community a whole lot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Nah, for real, man. That was a 
that was a big performance. I was, <laughs> I was looking at that performance live, just like, man, this is fire. Yeah. Like, this it got, is fire. I got stories for days, so whenever y'all yeah, want to talk yeah. about it, I got stories for days. We have an episode dedicated just, to just that. For that. <laughs> just for that. We got stories for days. That drummers were actually like. Yeah. It, it, cause it was, they, one thing I did appreciate, and it's the last thing I'm going to say, that she wanted it to be real. Yeah, she didn't yeah. want to lose any mm -hmm. of what we mm -hmm. brought to the table. And it definitely looked and Just so offensive. anything and the crazy part is like the creativity yeah, yeah like she was like oh i like this i don't like that and then we would be able to say what well, yeah. can we do this what are we thinking yeah. about this and you know the team was like oh yeah that's dope and okay, we yeah. really felt like it was a friday night yeah or a saturday night game wow every single day in the wow. stands that's crazy yeah, it was crazy that's Super dope crazy. man that's dope yeah yeah i did i mean i wouldn't say i regret well, I definitely don't regret not going. <laughs> yeah. um, but of course, I was in a little funk uh, right. uh, after saying no. But uh, just seeing y'all have fun, seeing y'all really enjoy it, man, I was like, you know, at least the band culture is, is now being uh, shown across the world yeah. now. Now that everybody know, okay, this is really a big thing. It's now a big that thing. the biggest artist on the world <laughs> wanted yep. a band on stage. Yep. So. And that just, it just opened opportunities. And now yeah. uh, the musicians and the band members that were there, the drummers, man, we got a Grammy from it. So right, exactly. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, you can definitely, from just that, you can just yeah. tell how, even from the beginning of marching yeah, band, you yeah. know, when the, yeah. you know, the 30s and 40s, I would have never thought if no, I no. was back in that, that, HBC bands to get this yeah, far. Yeah. So yeah. now the growth and you know this is one thing about the podcast we're about to really expand yeah, for real. the the marching band drumline culture yeah. to people who really don't understand yeah. what we do and to get a little bit more appreciation for it. So um, that definitely was a big stepping stone in what we do in our in our drum community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really I really appreciate and like that man. Yeah, man. Uh, you mentioned uh, yeah, exclusive percussion. Yeah. Um, you know we've uh, we've been talking a lot, and um, I know you was telling me that you want to have like a whole network. Uh, you, you peeped out my podcast. Mm -hmm. um, you peeped out a few individuals that uh, that play drums that you want to sign as artists. Right. Um, and say you, you pretty much want to have a network where so if somebody want to learn drums, you can come here for the podcast. You can go there if you want to for sure. learn drums. And so just go for go sure more more indefinitely. Well, Exclusive Percussion is a drumline entertainment company that was founded by myself in 2017. Um, Full fledged went full fledged and, and made a, a real production uh, 2018. And what I the main goal of exclusive percussion is to create jobs for drummers right, yeah. to make sure that other drummers don't feel like how I felt yeah. in 2017 and 16 yeah. working for these corporate companies yeah. and not getting your fulfillment, um, you mm -hmm. know, happen. You know, it just it's really because I felt that we have a lot of resources right, especially yeah. playing for the hawks for the with the braves and yeah. playing for just different music videos and stuff yeah, like there's yeah. a whole different culture that yeah, people yeah. really don't really don't understand <laughs> yeah but now and one of the things that when I, we went to coachella and i saw all these creators working on one project mm -hmm. it was like it's it, you know it, it did a light bulb yeah like yeah. wait a minute this can really be a thing yeah. and so that really made me want to put more input into exclusive percussion and make opportunities yeah. for drummers um for not only just do it for their hobby but say you know what i want to make a couple of a uh, couple yeah, of yeah, months, exactly. a couple yeah. of coins this weekend or something and so initially it's a drumline entertainment company so we do gigs like corporate gigs yeah, events yeah. and things of that nature yeah. but now we're going to reach out to the community we're hooking up with i uh i talk to strangers where okay. we go back into the atlanta community and mm -hmm. do drum lessons and talk about uh finance doing um agriculture and things of that yeah, nature yeah. uh with this podcast reaching out to a whole different type of audience just yeah. talk about the drum community yeah, yeah. and how they can help as well as this apparel we got apparel coming yeah. um that's that should be going I, I just thought of an idea can't talk about it just yet <laughs> because i'm still doing some research yeah. on it but i'm really trying to create a, a network like you said yeah. where uh black drummers um hbcu style drummers can feel uh, yeah. welcome and feel like oh I can do this and it's really for anybody we're yeah. gonna have auditions very soon so got a, got a lot of stuff yeah. planned for exclusive but the main goal for exclusive is to create a family yeah. Um, yeah. of drummers and feel feel safe and a safe place to talk about drumming yeah no no that's dope uh, because I feel like we do need like just a central uh, platform where we can uh, yeah. 
where just a community of drummers, black drummers, can just you know do their thing. For sure, for sure. <laughs> and so to be uh, to be a part of the the exclusive percussion, I think that's that's real. Oh, uh, for sure, that's for sure. But uh, hopefully, man, this Corona stuff will will move past because um, it definitely if it definitely affected the whole gigging yeah. uh, field or the gigging uh, world. Yeah. I mean, because you know the whole dis social distancing mm -hmm. and um, got some places got capacity uh, issues. Right. And so you can't just go out there and just perform right. um, with, all, with all this stuff. So. And I, but I think it's also kind of pushing us to cre uh, in a creative standpoint yeah, yeah. as drummers, as creative, yeah, as musician true. to, okay, adapt. I think one thing that HBCU uh, bands have, have definitely taught us is how to adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, def definitely the crabbing process definitely <laughs> helps you to adapt. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm always, I'm always a person that says, you know, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the process that we went through, going through our HBCU experience, is to say, you can do anything that you put your mind yeah. to and literally adjust yeah. with any change that, go, yeah. that goes on. Yeah. No matter what's going no on. No matter what's going on. So I think now we as drummers and creators have to think and figure out how to still reach mm -hmm. the masses mm -hmm. with this situation that's going yeah, on sure. um you know exclusive percussion was fortunate along with a, lo a lot of other uh drumline companies can't forget you know insane can't forget in oh, time yeah, yeah. can't forget oh, yeah. nod can't forget shockwave can't forget ada yeah, yeah, um yeah. Uh, hp there's a lot of different drum lines yeah. in the city of atlanta that's doing some great things in the community and they've all been affected but i yeah. think this has Kind of opened up another door. Yeah. Because yeah. we, it, not not which is exclusive, but Atlanta Drum Academy and a lot of different other companies, we've been doing a lot of virtual performances. Yeah, like, hey, uh, we need a drum line for this show. <laughs> can you send, can you send a video in? Right, right. It's like, <laughs> sure. Okay, like. <laughs> cool. So now it's like, okay, we can still reach the masses. It's just a different way. Now, yeah. In my eyes, I think it's a great idea. Now you get to really expand on your creativity. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right exactly. now you got lights. Now you got different camera angles. Now you yeah, can change yeah. certain things. You can actually put a little bit more production into your in your right. thing. So now I think, yeah, it sucks the the why you know where we at right mm -hmm. now because we're nobody likes change. Exactly. Yeah. But now something that change has done is has has literally shifted our focus of how to entertain yeah, more. Yeah. And I think that's a, the the blessing in disguise is like yeah, okay sure. now how do we entertain now? Right. Yeah. That and I think so, I I definitely agree with that. Uh, being forced to be at home is kind of like man, <laughs> I'm forced to be at home, but I have this humongous Huge. passion for drumming. Yeah. What can I do to still entertain people uh, despite me being at home? Exactly. And so uh, I mean I was seeing a lot of stuff like people was getting really in their bag with their drumming videos. Oh, people yeah. Was really getting in their bag with live uh, going on live Lives, and drumming. Yeah. Yeah, um, I know you got uh, you started posting TikTok videos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, like I literally had to do that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I did not want to get TikTok. Yeah, I hated TikTok. Like I, I'm a I'm a Vine guy. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. When Vine came out, I was like, okay, Vine. <laughs> and then Vine got deleted and went somewhere else yeah. and just kind of dismantled. I'm like, Psh, whatever, TikTok. It's the same thing. It, it and I'm is. like, man, I'm not is. doing TikTok. But then I saw where, dang. There's a big following big on following, TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Oh shoot! Well, maybe I do I'm need to do that. one video, yeah. and then literally I posted one video that I did months ago. Yeah. And it shot, and it's like, okay, well, maybe I do need to go ahead. And yeah. Keep, so you gotta, yeah, it's like you have yeah. these different avenues where you have to use your resources. Yeah. Yeah, that Corona, uh, well, the whole lockdown thing yes. definitely opened that that uh, that piece of your brain. Yeah. Uh, for creativity. Yeah, for and sure. That is. Honestly, a blessing in disguise. I mean, definitely uh, rest in peace to the people who's lost their lives mm -hmm. during this time. For um, sure. And even the people who've just been affected with Corona. But right. um, the blessing in disguise is that uh, that level of creativity that you don't think you would uh, right. you would gain while just being stuck at home. Yeah, <laughs> you got to really think about the the now because I don't think yeah. it's going to change anytime soon. Yeah, yeah I think no, we're really. gonna we, we, we're we're just gonna have to adapt to it, and mm -hmm. we have to just really try to figure out what's going to be the best thing for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the new wave now. You gonna get the vaccine? Nah, just playing. We ain't got to <laughs> <about that. laughs> Not nah. I'm I'm good on that right now, man. Until until they have a yeah. a beta B version. Yeah, I need. Yeah, I need. I need. I need, at I need least, another. I need another version. I need at least two million people to to do it. At least. And and see that they straight. Right. And that'd be good. <laughs> right, and then I'll be good. 
now yeah. for real. <laughs> uh, but you know the you know the Hawks. You know they saying that we might start back soon. Might start back. We got something from the the Atlanta Braves to say that yeah. they may start back soon. So it's it's slowly. Yeah, it's slowly trying to you know slowly trying to do their thing. Uh, and so hopefully uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to get back to truly truly. Get what back. I'm waiting for is homecoming. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for homecoming. Hopefully, homecoming. cause I miss homecoming. Yeah, I, I am, I'm not even gonna lie. I miss, <laughs> I miss going to an HBCU game, man. I, yeah, I'm man. not even gonna lie. Man, I went I miss to it. homecoming in 2018. Me and my fiance went. Yeah. Oh my god, I never, cause you know, being in the band, yeah, uh, we never really got to experience homecoming. Yeah. But man, when I went in 2018, to no, that was a lit one. Yes, that was a lit one. yes. Oh my God, yeah. bro! I was like, "This is what I've been missing this whole time." Like, <laughs> and that was your first one, right? Yeah. Like yeah. During, during, during the tailgating, I'd be in front of the section tapping off a cadence, like warming up the the drum line. Listen, but, your your whole your whole yeah. vision of what HBCU homecoming literally changes when you're definitely outside of man, the band, when you're man. not a part of Yo, it anymore. It's crazy. So, um, and I know they were saying, uh, I saw this poll uh, saying like, if we were there. Have homecoming this this fall with y'all right. do it. <laughs> Listen, uh, and I, I, I'm gonna have to go down and date. Nah, about. yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to because I I miss it, man. Gotta get some Bethune Grill. Yeah, I, I gotta be by the beach. I I need that sun. I just need that vibe because I think and it, the crazy part I think it's gonna be a big celebration. Yeah, it is. It it's is. gonna be so because we have so much to celebrate about. Yeah. It's it's just. And we haven't been, we literally haven't seen each other in a year. Yeah. yeah. And so it's going to be, it's, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> the only thing, uh, my wedding is in October. So, when? Uh, October 24th. So, <laughs> God oh, knows you that. ain't going. <laughs> you ain't going. You're not going. This is going to wrap it up. I know, uh, I know the <laughs> homecoming usually be in, uh, well, actually, it really depends when in October. Does that sound, what, what day is that? Uh, that's a Sunday. That sounds like our homecoming is going to be on the 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not it's okay I, I'll send some pictures I'll do some videos yeah, yeah go ahead because you ain't you're not coming you're not going it's okay yeah I, I, I'll check it out on IG man <laughs> right and I'll be at the next one right 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 and this is, do it like virtually we're just gonna do oh, a yeah. zoom call exactly yeah do a zoom call zoom and you, you'll be just you'll be just like you there zoom on the final famous right right exactly <laughs> with nah, your man. suit that'd be uh I think that homecoming will be big yeah, yeah. um even just to see the band again, like to see uh, yeah. Goodman's band again, because uh, I really haven't been able to see them. I mean, I know they performed for the the voting uh, campaign. The voting campaign did. thing that was really good. Um, that was really good. And I think they did something else. Uh, I think they did something else, but you know, you can't see that week by week, week by clips week, yeah. of uh, Cookman, man. Exactly. And I'm like, dang, because uh, one thing I frequently uh, search on YouTube, <laughs> Cookman BCU Drumline 2020, right. exactly. BCU Drumline 2019, exactly. BCU. And so uh, I couldn't really search BCU Drumline 2020. Nothing, nothing right. to come up. So how does that affect uh, you know just how you rant your podcast? Um, yeah, so because I know that's because mainly your your information and how you yeah. do your stuff is from the marching yeah. band season. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if, even from a logistics standpoint, um, I would usually record my podcast at a library, um, and uh, because just at the library it would be more peaceful. Like I would just get a room, right, um, and then. Um, just record there but as soon as corona hit all the libraries closed oh, yeah <laughs> and right. so i had to uh just record from my, my bank my mom's crib on bankhead man bankhead. i'm like oh no and so uh and so that was the thing yeah and then um as soon as uh marching bands stopped happening band practices stopped happening band mm. news in general just, just, just ended uh, I, even from time to time, I would talk about DCI, DCI drum lines ended, yeah, uh, WGI, that that whole mm -hmm. thing, all those competitions ended. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, man, <laughs> what content Which, would I have? But, exactly. Uh, and so that's when I uh, started getting to the bag of uh, teaching the lick, yeah, uh, and uh, doing that whole thing or talking about the history of different uh, drumming topics. But, right. But yeah, man, that that marching band thing <laughs> that ended, boy, when Carl started, but it was crazy. Yeah, man. But uh, I mean, we can. You know, we got two heads, two brains now, and we can definitely get in our content bag now. Oh, but, yeah, um, man. We got some great stuff coming sure. up. We sure. got some, ooh, <laughs> we. If y'all can just, if y'all was a fly on the wall, y'all would be yeah. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to so go ahead right now go ahead and like tell subscribe you, and all like, that good stuff you're, all that, you're definitely going you're definitely going to like it I tell you you're going to want to you're going to want to stay tuned right but we still going to do our fifth quarter segment got um, to 
you know, of the fifth quarter segment. This is when, you know, we pick a, a, a real good band clip or a real good drumline clip that y'all may have slept on. Um, um, and even though the clips you may use uh, may not be sleeper uh, clips because especially the clip I'm about to play today. Right. But uh, but still, you know, it's, it's just band clips because we still want to keep that uh, the whole band thing uh, or you. the whole drumline thing um, going on the podcast. So um, the clip I'm going to play is uh, Southern University. It's from them in 2019. They was playing a song called Let It Rain um, by uh, Paul S. Morton. That's the, the gospel song, Let It Did Rain. I see? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. Oh, my God. I've seen this one. Hey, y'all, y'all check this out. Yeah. man that was uh southern university playing let it rain but oh my god you know it's crazy my mom used to always play that song uh, when i was a kid because you know i was my mom was a big person in the church yeah um and so um she used to always play that song just going to church and i would be in the back of the car playing my game boy Advance, listening right, right, to the song. Right. <laughs> and so the fact that southern university played that song and sound it sounds exactly, exactly like, like the, the song. song like he because paul morton oh my my bad. <laughs> no, you good. Uh, Paul Morton, uh, he does like ad libs in a song, and they did ad libs and everything. Man, I'm like, oh my god, bro, that's that's yeah, crazy. That, that, I think that's the best version I've, I've ever. Yeah. Heard. Well, honestly, I, 
I don't think no other band has made has arranged that. Nah, not, not I don't ridiculous. think I don't, I don't think I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> that, that song's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy that you pulled out Southern because my clip is from uh, is, is Southern Bethune Cookman College at the time. Wow. Uh, in 2006, that was my freshman year. Yeah, my first year at Bethune Cookman, my first HBCU game, and it was the Meek Sweat Challenge in Jacksonville mm. where we went up against Southern and. Uh, my this clip is is the the trumpet battle now there's been a lot of ups and downs and some conversation of who was the better mm-hmm, the better mm-hmm. section i really i don't know <laughs> it was just a good battle yeah, yeah and i want y'all to decide y'all figure out who y'all think is the best battle but i just i just think it was a good yeah, clip. so yeah. definitely check this out real quick Yeah man, that's my favorite clip. That's my favorite clip. I think I think TOP held it yeah, down. Yeah man, shout out to TOP. Shout, shout out to, to 85. TOP. Eighty five all day. Shout out to the fellow eighty five. Right. <laughs> Yo, yeah yeah. TOP held held they held it down. Held man. it down. They, Southern was probably sleeping on them too. Yeah they did. Uh, yeah. Cause you know everybody really sleep on uh, Cook man. We play the same same book, stuff all the time. Whatever. But uh, nah, when it's time to get busy, we'll oh, get we busy. We get busy with you. And um, definitely. The eighty TLP they got busy that that game. Yeah, but man. Shots out. I remember when I first saw the clip, I was like, "Is this TLP?" Like, <laughs> right. Oh my god. But yeah, man. I think uh, I think we done. Here, I man. think we're good, man. Yeah. Uh, as y'all know, uh, I'm gonna just reiterate, man. We in a we in another setting. We in the actual studio now. Uh, we got a actual cameraman. Shout out to RDK Studios. Man. RDK all day. Shout out to exclusive percussion. You see this clean drum clean behind drum. us. Got a shout out to my guy, uh, Aite, man. He has his own drum uh, customization business, man. He yep. helped me out and got this drum together. So shout out to him uh, for making that happen. Yeah. Man. It's really dope. It looked real good, man. So I, yeah. I truly appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, man. So, yeah, you'll be able to uh, see this on YouTube, uh, either on the exclusive percussion page or uh, on my on my YouTube page. and. Yep. Um, yeah, man, definitely uh, just stay tuned, man. We're we going to be teaching licks, t- talking about the history of drumming. Uh, we're going to be bringing a lot of folks on. He know a lot of people. He uh, know, know a lot of people. I know a lot of people in the, in the drum community. And, uh, man, we just, we just want to make this a central location where we can talk about drums, man. Yeah. And I can talk about drums all day. Honestly. All day long. Uh, and, and what makes this even more cool, the cameraman is a drummer. It's drummer, too. Oh, they, it's still in the family. The drummer. The, the cameraman can chop you up as well, bro. Really so. can. Don't don't sleep. <laughs> no, no, don't sleep. Cause he really could. 
So, saying. so yeah, man, we, we got some we got some big things going on, man. So definitely uh follow exclusive percussion. Most definitely. Uh follow the drum lounge pod, uh subscribe, like, all that, man, and uh just stay tuned for all the all the content that we got, man. For sure. And uh I we'll check y'all in the next episode, man. Peace. All right, y'all.